Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. Now, we are still investigating the murder of Rodney Bentcliffe, Sir Rodney Bentcliffe, excuse me. Um, he was an archaeologist, and we just finished examining his office. But I have to tell you guys, I read the comments from the last episode, and I have to say that I really appreciate the intelligence of my audience, because you guys had the exact same theory that I was formulating in my head as to where the murder weapon went. And the key to this is right here in this uh, champagne bucket, the ice that is not even melted yet. Now, where would be the best place to put a murder weapon in a place like a steam bath, where it's hot? Well, if you make a murder weapon out of ice, such as just a really sharp point, keep it in that champagne bucket, come in here, stab someone in the eye, and then the evidence itself will just melt away, especially when we learn from turning this switch that this place got incredibly um, steamed up and you couldn't see anything. And death was instantaneous, so I'm pretty sure that's what happened. The uh, weapon melted away. But we still have a little bit more to explore. I know those guys in the steam room are probably getting very pruned right now, but I don't care. <laughs> we still have... Uh, more to explore here. And I guess this is... Oh, got a scene. That... Oh my God, are you all right? I wonder how this could have happened. <laughs> yes, it is somewhat treacherous. <clears throat> Fortunately, I am unscathed. To where does this corridor lead? To the Frigidarium, the coal room. Barely unscathed and by a very small margin. And treacherous is an understatement. Yeah, it's just a little too convenient. Those stones weigh tons. We won't move them. It does not matter. If our investigation requires it, we shall ask for them to be removed. We've got people looking for work. It is, uh, Victorian London. What should we do next, Holmes? Well, I'm not sure. I would really like to find a, uh... Pathway into the... Frigidarium. You know, is there anything else that we need to examine here? I don't think so. Okay. Well, maybe we need to go ahead and let no, the witnesses go. This area served. Did anything get shaken? Oh, well, that's convenient. Figured it would have knocked some of those pots off. Way to be there for me, Lestrade. These baths are becoming sinister. Now let's look at our evidence here. Search the crime scene and area of the Lestrade. Oh yeah, we have the tongs. We got the tongs in the office, so now we can go ahead and grab that piece of metal that was in here. See what exactly it is. I know it's getting hot, boys. Just bear with me here. Alright. I should analyze this melted metal. Yes, indeed. Metal melted found in Brazier. Search archives. 1893. Perform analysis on Sir Rodney's wound. And a sample of dirt from Sir Rodney's fingernails. Yes, indeed. Okay. Double check and see if there's anything else here. We've Saw that grid. The grid cannot be removed. I don't want to stay here. Let us out, please. We already saw the blood on you. Any of you guys have any marks or anything I should be aware of? No? Then we may be good. All right. I am going to assume, for all intents and purposes, that we are done here. All these events are bad for the baths. And my job. Not to mention that a man died. Mr. Holmes, 
I should like to take the suspects to the yard. You can interrogate them there. Any objections? Nope. None, Lestrade. Interrogate suspects. Okay, well, let's go ahead and travel over to Scotland Yard, and then we'll perform some analysis and such at Baker Street. Actually, maybe finding that stuff at Baker Street first will give us some more options when we talk to the people at Scar Scotland Yard. Let's go ahead and head to Baker Street first. It'll be mini-game time, I would assume. Now, do we have any deductions? Champagne? An effective arrival. Nothing so far. We'll just take some time. Alright, first things first. On the sofa for the third time today. Well, don't be surprised if Watson sits on you again. Archives first. Newspapers. Encyclopedias. I guess newspapers would be the way to go. 1893. Aha! Bent Cliff's Mummy. The Great Excavation in Aswan... I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. Has taken over three years. Sir Rodney Bencliffe directed the archaeological work. A mummy was found with an inocleated eye and posed in an unusual position. The right hand was tensed as if reaching out for something or to someone. The mummy was buried upright. She's been named the Desperate Mummy due to her peculiar characteristics. Nearby could be read in Latin. By the eye, he was punished for he saw what he was not worthy. The mummy is believed to be Roman rather than Egyptian, as some symbols found in the tomb are in common with the Mithraic mysteries. Here it is. Hmm. By the eye he was punished, for he saw that he was not worthy. Dreadful. What? So are we doing, like, a mummy's curse kind of thing? Dialogue. An unopened bottle of champagne and ice bucket was found in the bath's changing room. We had already talked to the guy at the bath, so that probably has something to do with the interrogatees. Is that is that the word? Over at Scotland Yard. Alright, analysis. We have to analyze dirt, blood, and metal. Let's do it. Dirt first. Set focus up, set focus down. There you go. Pyrite, otherwise known as fool's gold. He had pyrite underneath his fingernails. Weird. Selenite. White clay particles. Interesting. According to the color and its composition, I deduce that this sample is white clay. Now, I need to find which area near London this sample belongs to. Okay, white London clay, purple, that puts right near... The sample of dirt belongs to the white London clay region, located near the city of St. Albans. There we go. Well, that's one. Let's go ahead and analyze the blood next. Let us analyze this blood sample. Focus needs more focus. This blood has not coagulated well. It seems very liquid. That is strange. Let us see what is inside it. Hydrogen peroxide will bring any foreign matter to the surface. Good old hydrogen peroxide. I must take a pipette and place several drops of hydrogen peroxide. Oh. There we go. One. Two. And three. Water. This blood is heavily diluted with water. Yeah. The, um, ice dagger is looking more and more like the mark. Now I need to analyze the metal. 
This is a piece of metal taken from a brazier. It appears to be silver, but I need to be sure. If it is silver, it will be possible to melt it, since silver's melting point is at around 900 degrees Celsius. Let us compare this sample with a silver penny by testing it with acid. If it changes color to match the result of a reaction with a silver coin, then it is silver. We're learning things. Okay, so get some acid. First, we'll use the control. Red. The reaction is the same red stain. It is silver. Britannia silver quality. A big old hunk of silver. My analysis table. It is useful for my work. Okay. Well, that's interesting. What should we do next, Holmes? Let's see. Melted silver. Let's go ahead and travel back to the baths. We're going to see if... I think his name was Alan. If he has anything to... Uh, add here. Yeah, Alan Phillips. If he may know where the silver comes from. These baths are becoming sinister. That would be a negative. Mr. Holmes? Okay. Never mind. To Scotland Yard it is. Oh, I'm hoping we get to look through their uh, belongings and stuff, stuff before we talk to them. Maybe they're still there in Scotland Yard, wrapped in a bath towel. That would be interesting. Okay, well, let's uh, check this first. Ooh, I see stuff on the evidence table. Yes. Pitkin's belongings. An embroidered silk handkerchief. RP. A fountain pen with solid gold trim. Sir Gregory Pitkin's visiting card. Hmm. Here's Garrow. This is the guy. Yeah, the bloody towel. When Garrow found Sir Rodney dead, he wiped the blood upon himself. Ooh, what we got in here, sir? A file with herbs. Do you know what it is, my dear fellow? It's the St. John's wart flower, Holmes. It's commonly used as a drug against melancholia. However, an overdosage might lead to a rash or even hallucinations. Holmes like, I'll just file this away for a rainy day. Though I would assume he's you're probably looking for the hallucinations and not the rash. Blinkhorn's belongings. Sir Gregory Pitkin, manager to Mr. Blinkhorn. Dear Sir, the interests that I represent require the situation at the baths to be changed for the better. At the present time, the Frigidarium excavations remain under your direction, and yet the works have not progressed. You have failed to find anything of value, and we are unable to make the Frigidarium accessible to the public. The Frigidarium is a valuable asset in the recreation of the Roman bath experience. I urge you to complete your work within the next two months. You have this remaining time to conclude your archaeological research and to find yourself another workplace. Ooh. An ordinary pencil. And Bentcliffe's belongings. This is what I wanted to see. That is a Roman coin. A uh, denarian. An old and rather dirty coin. This ring was most likely the one that Sir Rodney wore. He removed it before entering the steam room. Hmm... An Egyptian symbol. It is a very old jewel. I see the join. This ring was repaired, and quite badly, too, with silver. Why on earth would they wear such a ring? A very pertinent question. 
might be a key or a clue as to get to somewhere, maybe? A hand-drawn map. And notebook. Rodney Bentcliffe's notebook. It may contain something of interest. Ooh. The last pages were torn out. We must find a way of retrieving Sir Rodney's last lines. Watson, please prevent anyone from entering the room. But first, fetch me a pencil. I have one, though. To begin with, a few strokes of the pencil will be enough. I don't want to damage the traces. Okay. Ah. Yep, yep. And then to gently smudge the leftover pencil marks with a handkerchief. I'm sure that Watson won't mind if I use his. Of course not. Today I almost found it. This date will go down in history. Hmm. So something valuable was found. Mr. Holmes, the coroner... But what are you doing? Tampering with the evidence? I prefer to make them talk. Today, I almost found it. This date will go down in history. Sir Rodney was about to make an outstanding discovery. Wonderful. I could retrieve only the final words. The rest of it is lost. Perhaps the autopsy will assist us in that matter. I'm not sure that I can allow you to inspect the body now. I am sure that you must, Constable. Well... No, it's just like, okay. Report from coroner, age 63. The right eyeball has been burst, pierced to the hilt by a curved blade knife. The blade cut through the orbit of the frontal bone, ripping a part of the frontal lobe and the corpus callosum, after which, completing its trajectory into the cerebellum, caused hemorrhagic lesions. All these injuries led directly to the death of the individual. At the upper lobe of the right lung, there is an old injury filled with an amount of mucus and ciliated debris that may correspond to a chronic infection by elements likely inhaled in a burial chamber. A decaying mummy, for example, or a dried and decomposing food product intended to accompany the deceased in their grave. The remainder of the body does not appear to have been damaged. Huh. Okay, anything else here? Nope. So there's dialogue. Lots of dialogue. And sir... Oh, the body is ready for examination. Yes. Let us head down into the depths. Oh, look. It's fresh on the slab for us. Let's see, we got a chest scar. Oh yeah, the stomach scar. Well, An unusual wound. Inflicted by a curved knife, which resulted in instant death, as the coroner's report says. According to the coroner, there were no cardiac problems nor lung congestion. But there were traces of fungus, possibly contracted from the Egyptian tombs. The coroner observed no stomach nor liver disease if we're to accept that Sir Rodney was an occasional drinker and 63 years of age. Whoa, hello there. The bruising is in lines. Some light bruising caused by a rope. They were caused by a rope around the waist. Sir Rodney was descending somewhere. So someone was wanting to hide the fact that he's probably lowered himself down into maybe some ruins or something that he found. Now, judging from what I'm seeing here, um, in terms of our evidence, this is this is currently my uh, my thoughts on the matter. Um, it's probably going to change, but these things happen. We have Sir Gregory Pitkin's letter. Okay. Basically saying the Frigerium excavations remain under direction. He probably has a lot of money um, invested in this. So I would wonder if 
if Ben Cliff found something that would basically maybe cause the frigerium to be closed or the um, baths to be closed or affect the baths in some way, that would definitely affect um, Pitkin's bottom line. That's currently all we really have to go on before we interrogate the uh, suspect. So let's go ahead and get to that. Who's first? Ah, uh, Mr. Pitkin, we were just talking about you. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Good day to you, Sir Gregory. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the murder that took place this morning. Would you mind answering a few questions? Tell me, Mr. Holmes, will I need to stay here for very much longer? Maybe. Let's take a look-see. Nice haircut, as expected. Oh. <laughs> Disdain. Aristocratic roots. Man of wealth. And what are we missing here? Something. Yeah, we had to stain on the mouth. Oh, arrogant look. Well, yeah, that that's about, that would about do it. You are the manager of the baths, is that correct? Yes, I'm passionate about archaeology. I wanted to restore the ruins. My ambition is to open the baths to the public. Living archaeology can be a profitable business, although now I'm not so sure. I see. When do you wish to begin using the baths? When the archaeological researches are over, I will be free to complete the restoration. It is the usual process. Mm hmm. What was your relationship with Sir Rodney Bentcliffe? You were not particularly close. He had an unpleasant temperament, suspicious. Authoritarian, unkind. People possessed by genius may be forgiven for their nature, but not by me. Was he obstructive? Not at all. Everything he did led us to greater success. He helped us increase the potential of the building. Please tell me what happened this morning. The test that we performed this morning was a success. The steam was working well. But then, of course, that awful murder. What did you see? The steam was too thick to see anything. But ask Garrow. He saw the body first. Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behavior? Look, I'm not a suspicious fellow, but I think that he had professional interests elsewhere that he did not wish us to know about. Why should you think that? Where? I have no idea. But after all, it was not my business. Hmm... How was the work progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather slowly, I would say. And we got Pitkin's letter here. Sir Gregory, could you please explain this letter? You expressed the wish to call off the research work at the baths. It was all about Blinkhorn. He was merrily digging away and taking very little care about it, ruining everything and finding nothing of any value. But the arrival of Sir Rodney changed your mind? Sir Rodney's work was extremely promising, and it was good for the bar's publicity. So yes, I changed my mind. Okay. Gotcha. Are you aware that Mr. Garrow is under a form of medication? Garrow? No. But I never liked that parasite. Do you believe him to be capable of murder? Well, he did have blood on him. Does that make him a murderer? Good lord, no. Some melted silver was found inside the steam room brazier. Do you know where it came from? Silver? No. Did you bring a bottle of champagne to the baths? Absolutely not. Sir Rodney did, I think. Okay, so that's <clears throat> Mr. Pitkin. 
So, so what we got from his testimony is that Blinkhorn was doing a horrible, a horrible job. He was going to go ahead and close down the excavation, and then Pitkin, or excuse me, uh, Bentcliffe came in and was basically improving by leaps and bounds. So maybe, hmm. Now there's Mr. Blinkhorn right there. And we also got Mr. Garo to talk to. And I think we'll go ahead and talk to these two gentlemen at the beginning of the next episode, guys. There's a lot of really interesting kind of twists and turns that this will go through. We've got multiple suspects. And I don't think we've really scratched the surface of what's really going on here. But, uh... Locked. Oh, yeah, can't even talk to Lestrade. That's a shame. But we will go ahead and end it here and pick it up next time. Hope you all have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone. <laughs>